I recently bought another hard drive and after doing loads of research with the intention of perhaps spending more money on something that on paper that is faster and safer, I decided to buy the same old hard drive. I'll tell you what I use in a minute, but first let me provide you with some information that I wish I could have accessed in a less tech jargon way before I made my decision on which hard drive to buy. So sometimes with tech products, <laughs> clever marketing campaigns could have you thinking that if you spend more money on a certain item, then that product is perhaps better than the other products that are on offer. This is not always true. You see, my husband, he uses a laptop that is better than mine and cheaper than mine. But you know, I'm an Apple kind of girl. <laughs> I'm comfortable with how it works and even though it costs more, it's a better laptop for me. But when it comes to external hard drives, I'm not necessarily of the same mindset. Cost is very much an important factor that I consider. Apart from cost, there are some other things you probably would want to consider when it comes to purchasing an external hard drive. You may want to consider the drive speed, the size, the capacity of the external hard drive, as well as the portability. So in this video, we're going to compare an HDD with an SSD. Those are acronyms for hard disk drive and solid state drive. If you feel like I'm speaking Greek, let me explain the difference. We'll start with the hard disk drive. All of your footage is stored on a spinning platter. Think of magnets pulling up information from a spinning disc. It's similar to a DVD and a DVD player. Remember those. <laughs> Once you slip the disc into those DVD machines, the information is pulled up and then projected on the screen. Similarly with this guy, you plug it into your computer, the disc is in here, and all of the information is then pulled through and then displayed on your screen. Now, to understand how a solid state drive operates, I read an article from Extreme Tech that explained how data is stored. The SSD does not rely on moving parts. There's nothing spinning inside of it. I'll link the article in the description, but from my understanding, the flash cells in a solid state drive operate very similarly to cells in our body as opposed to a DVD machine. But basically, the one uses spinning moving parts and the other doesn't. You might be wondering why I keep referring back to the disc when it comes to comparing these two and it is an important factor to consider. Information stored on a spinning disc affects a couple of things. For example, speed. When you drag and drop the files, it takes longer as well as when you pull the files, it takes longer because everything has to find its home on a disc that's spinning. Whereas with the flash cells, it almost just stores it a lot quicker and pushes it out a lot faster as well. Nothing spinning. And then also if you had to drop this bad boy, which is a hard disk drive, you stand the chance of losing your files or your files becoming damaged or corrupted. Similarly to if you were to drop a DVD. <laughs> so if you're on the move a lot, if you drop this thing, <laughs> there's a lot of risk involved with all of your footage that you're storing on here. So the SSD is safer and faster because there is no spinning disk but it's also expensive. I've read that it can be two to three times more expensive than a hard disk drive. So if you're a videographer just starting out or you're looking for a place to store your family photos or family videos, then you need to ask yourself how much money you're willing to spend. Personally, I use a hard disk drive and that is controversial because I'm a videographer and I need access to files very, very quickly. But I'm in a space where I'm not quite ready to invest a lot of money into an SSD. And I've used this for the past year and it's been fine. I do take care of it though. And I am aware of the risk involved with this if I had to drop it. But when it comes to spending money on an SSD, I think of the opportunity cost. I would rather buy mics or rather buy lighting as opposed to putting all of that money into something where if I look after a hard disk drive, it does the same thing. It's a little bit slower, but it ultimately gives me what I need and it's okay but that's just me. And just in case you're wondering, this video isn't sponsored. I'm not leaving links anyway. This is just what I use. And I work from home most of the time. So it's a decent fit for me and for what I need to achieve. So I use the WD Elements. And if you've picked that up already, you're probably asking, but Marks, you use a Mac. How do you format it? Don't worry, I've got you covered. I'll link a video where I show you step-by-step -step how to format. WD elements for your Mac. It's super simple. You can do it in about three to five minutes. But to wrap this up, you need to decide what's important for you. If it's speed and safety, and you've got a little bit of extra disposable income that you want to invest, then a solid state drive, I mean, it really is the best. <laughs> Especially if you're a videographer or a photographer that needs to access your files super quick. But if it's cost and value that you're looking after, 
then a hard disk drive, well, that might be a good idea for you. But in case you're curious about to organize footage on your HDD or SDD, I'll show you in a second how I organize mine. But for everybody else who wants to drop off here, if you enjoyed this video, give it a big thumbs up and good luck with whatever decision you end up making. And for everybody else, I'll show you how I go about organizing footage and setting things up on my hard drive. So step one is formatting your hard drive for Mac. Again, I'll link the video for that. And then you're gonna pull through your folders and start organizing. I double click on my external disk to open it. Then I right click and create a new folder. I'm currently doing a meditation challenge. So this is where that footage will go. But I'm going to create a new folder and call it B-roll, which is supplementary footage. And all of the B-roll of my meditation challenge is gonna find a home here. Now I'll select the memory card that has my footage on it. I'll then select the footage I want and drag and drop it over onto my external hard drive. Now this footage is one day of a guided meditation challenge that I'm doing. So it helps to store this footage in a new file. But this is all still B-roll or supplementary footage. And I want to access it again for another video potentially, which is why I'm adding it to this B-roll folder. Now I number the clips as this makes editing a little bit easier for me. I'll drag the numbered clips into the correct folder. Now the footage that is left over does not belong here. So I will highlight it and drag it so that it hovers over my external hard drive. I'll make another folder and this will be the home to all my footage for challenges that I do. I'll highlight, drag and drop this footage into my new challenge folder. And from here I'll create a new folder as this is a meditation challenge. I'll highlight, drag and drop the clips and then create one more folder that helps me remember which day this is. It will be the talk to camera reflections of day four of this challenge. I'll highlight, drag and drop again and then rename the clips for an easier edit. I'll click the back arrow until I get to the B-roll file on my external hard drive. I'll access the space relevant to my meditation challenge. And now I'm going to pull more footage from my memory card. I'm going to pull the footage from day three of the challenge. I'll now create another folder referencing day three's B-roll. I'll select only the B-roll clips and drag it in. I'll then rename the clips. I'll now press the back arrow and search for the talk to camera footage and drag it so that it hovers over the hard drive and then move it to hover over the challenges folder on the hard drive. I'll then drop it into the meditation challenge folder. I'll then create a new folder for day three's talk to camera reflection, highlight, drag and drop and rename the footage. So this is an idea for how to use external storage and how I create files and organize my footage. I hope it inspired some ideas of how you can use your hard drive too. If you found this video helpful, go ahead and give it a big thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more content from me, go ahead and subscribe to this channel. I will also leave videos for you in the end screen that I think you'll enjoy if you enjoyed this one. Otherwise, I'll see you soon. Take care guys, bye.